The Pixel 9 Pro XL is just a bigger Pixel 9 Pro but that's good enough. It doesn't have exclusive camera features of extra RAM for a boost. It's just got a bigger display and bigger battery. That means the Pixel 9 Pro is an even better pick this year but it also means that you can choose your Pixel based on the size you like not the features you need. While well, Google announced four phones at its August 2024 event, the standard Pixel 9 and Pixel 9 Pro XL are the two that hit the market first on August 2020. Meanwhile, the Pixel 9 Pro and 9 Pro Fold arrive on the scene September 4. In the UK, you can pick up the Pixel 9 Pro XL with double the storage at no extra charge on purchases made from September 5, US buyers can nab $200 US dollar in store credit if ordering before August 28 and Australian buyers can pick up a limited edition poster with purchases made before August 25. The addition of the new smaller Pro model this year helps Google justify its decision to render the Pixel 9 Pro XL the most expensive candy bar Pixel to date. It starts at US$1,099. It's practically like for like when compared to equivalent storage option of the iPhone 15 Pro Max, truly putting an end to the notion that the Pixels are the affordable flagship option. For the asking price, you also get a year's access to Google One AI Premium 2TB plan which as well as granting access to Gemini Advance and Gemini Live includes more general Google benefits like Fitbit Premium Access, Nest Air, 10% back on Google Store purchases and unlimited magic editor saves in Google Photos. A pixel in iPhone font, that's the shorthand I keep coming back to the newer Pixel 9 series design language. The size and feel of the Excel's new squared aluminum frame immediately reminds me of Apple's current iPhone 15 Plus and iPhone 15 Pro Max in the hand. Does that polished metal attract fingerprints? Absolutely, but not anywhere near as badly as expected. This new squared form paired with the heaviest build of any candy bar Pixel yet leads to a more premium look and feel overall. This is helped further by the Pixel 9 Pro XL's slimmer profile compared to the Pixel 8 Pro and side by side with my wife's old Pixel 6 Pro, the jump in build quality is truly impressive. One update I'm not sure I love quite so much is the loss of the camera bar which is replaced in this generation with a camera peel that protrudes out of the phone's rear panel at 90 degrees. It makes for a more bold and confident aesthetic but it's not as quickly identifiable as the bar. As well as the cosmetic changes, Google also claims that the Pixel 9 Pro Axel's new mid frame design, not to mention its 100% recycled aluminum outer frame, Gorilla Glass Victus 2 front and rear panels, and IP68 certified protection against dust and water ingress, make the new phone twice as durable as its predecessor. In my time with the Pixel 9 Pro Axel, by trying to keep it out of harm's way as much as possible. The finish has remained unscathered, but whether it will age as gratefully as its titanium clad competition from Apple and Samsung remains to be seen. Both sizes of Pixel 9 Pro come in four colorways, with Obsidian pictured most prominently in this review. The hazel finish most closely apes the iPhone 15 Pro's natural titanium look and the Galaxy S24 Ultra's titanium grey, while porcelain and rose quartz offer decidedly more vivacious options. The Pixel 8 Pro Super Extra display feels like a noteworthy upgrade from the panel on its predecessor and while not as art shattering an improvement this generation. The Pixel 9 Pro XL screen is a great refinement yet again. Although it sports the same resolution as the Pixel 8 Pro's panel, both high brightness and peak brightness levels have been cranked up to 2000 and 3000 nits, respectively meeting or beating key rivals in a spec for spec comparison. Add to that, the panel's flat design, its thin equally proportioned bezel on all sides and its excellent viewing angles and the Pixel 9 Pro's Axel's super actual display is a thing to behold. As before, the use of an LTPO OLED panel facilitates a dynamic refresh rate from 1 to 120Hz making it ideal for OLED on display functionality thanks to the implied power saving benefits while also still serving up a snappy user experience when swiping around the UI. 
one of the more prominent changes you might not immediately notice is the fingerprint sensor instead of the optical module used since the pixel 6 series google has gone the way of samsung and instead kitted the pixel 9 pro axles display with an ultrasonic sensor i didn't notice a huge difference when making the switch from my pixel 7 pro but in side by side comparison is lives up to the promise of a 2x speed improvement perhaps more useful is the greater reliability especially with damp fingers or when used in the rain one side effect of this latest generation pixel launch happening earlier than usual is that the whole series runs android 14. typically google times the arrival of its latest smartphones to coincide with the release of the next android but the pixel line debut on the same Android 14 foundation as the Pixel 8. At least the company's even impressive commitment to 7 years of updates persists, meaning the iPhone's price tag includes excellent long-term support for both future releases of Android and subsequent security patches, an area where many rivals still fall short. As a long-time Pixel user, the look and feel of Android on the Pixel 9 Pro Axel is characteristically clean, easily navigable, pleasantly customizable, and dressed with helpful everyday features that aren't guaranteed on other phones. That said, the Pixel 9 Pro Axel does get some Pixel exclusive editions that up the ante, all of which lean on Gemini AI. There is a new dedicated weather app that generates dynamic weather reports to make insights into each day's weather more digestible than ever. The ability to drag and drop the various in-app widgets for things like UV index, 10-day forecast, and air quality is a nice perk too. Next up is the new Pixel Screenshot app which seems like an odd addition at first but for list makers, students and journalists, it offers surprising depth. You can add notes to individual screenshots and group them into collections too. The app can index screenshot content across text and images making it searchable. This allows for semantic search and object recognition as well as recognizing Wi-Fi passwords and QR code information. Pixel Studio uses an on-device variant of Imagen 3S diffusion-based text to image generative AI allowing you to create imagery seemingly from scratch. You can remix results using predefined style prompts or sculpt of a completely original prompt if you prefer. At launch, Pixel Studio won't render people, but it's fine with objects and animals. It also managed to render legible text without much artifacting, a challenging test that I have seen other image generators fail. Right now, the application proves novel enough, but there is a scope for everything from messaging to graphic design work depending on your feeling towards the use of AI-generated imagery. The price of the Pixel 9 Pro XL also includes a year's access to Gemini Advance, meaning you can interact with its latest of device model in Gemini 1.5 Pro and gain access to Gemini Live, Google's conversational AI experience. My family tested its abilities on a bean salad recipe including suggestions on preparation and accompaniments, all without any obvious breaks in conversation or AI hallucinations. I also had it explain how to change various Gemini and Android settings, although its inability to take actions on many features feels like a missed opportunity or at least an area that Google should focus on as it expands the assistant's functionality. A couple of other sprinkles of AI magic on the Pixel 9 Pro Axel include text-based summaries of YouTube videos that I didn't have time to watch and zoom and hence image upscaling. I'm also integrated by the call notes feature shown off at launch that will summarize phone calls. However, this wasn't ready during review. The most obvious criticism of Gemini on the Pixel 9 Pro is that it feels consistently slower when asked to carry out the same task I would have previously asked for Google Assistant. The trade-off is much richer results and more insight provided you trust the source data Gemini is pulling from. Nowhere is AI more 
prevalent across the Pixel 9 Pro XL's user experience than the camera. While it might have gone by machine learning in the early days of the Pixel camera experience, AI-powered post-processing has been the secret sauce that has helped elevate the reputation of the Pixel cameras over the past four years, to the point where they regularly sit among the best camera phones. As Google has focused its efforts on AI more directly, the proposition of a Pixel camera has changed somewhat, with capture and editing becoming two distinct facets of the experience. If you are looking for a great all-round camera phone, the Pixel 9 Pro XL is right up there. A revised HDR Plus pipeline puts into practice the company's learnings from previous entries paired with new training data to create images with a more true-to-life appearances, better exposure, dynamic range, details, contrast, and colors. While the Pixel 9 Pro XL feels more equipped for everything you throw at in the right now, including high fidelity mobile games, there is no getting around the fact that Tensor chips continues to lag behind Apple's iPhone chips and Qualcomm's top tier Snapdragon in terms of raw processing and graphical grunt. Whether it's a matter of the shorter turnaround between generations of Pixel or the fact that it's not Google's focus, the new Tensor G4 chipset powering all of the Pixel 9 series doesn't pack that much more horsepower even compared to the Tensor G3. It's built on a similar 4 nanometer process as the Tensor G3 but with new core architecture and one fewer high efficiency cores than its predecessor. The switch from an Immortalities to Mali GPU means no more ray tracing, a small but notable loss for mobile gamers. In testing, the Tensor G4 processor produced a 10% bump to CPU performance, a 15% graphical performance improvement, and a 16% uptick in NPU performance over the last generation. However, the biggest gains look to be in power efficiency. As with its predecessor, the Pixel 9 Pro XL can be had in 4 storage variants, however, the 1TB ceiling appears to be a US exclusive, while other markets, including the UK and Australia, top out at 512GB. 
Its 16 GB of RAM is a range wide upgrade, likely driven by the phone's newfound AI capabilities. But spec heads will note that Google isn't using the latest available standards of either LPDDR memory or UFS storage compared to Samsung's Galaxy S24. Should you buy the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL? Buy it if you want the richest mobile AI experience. Samsung's Galaxy AI is great, but Google's execution with Gemini Advanced is easier, richer, and more fun to use. Buy it if you want an excellent camera phone. The Pixel 9 Pro XL's camera system is a small but appreciated upgraded on its predecessors, highlighted by a new bag of AI supported tricks you can't get outside of the Pixel family. Buy it if you plan on using this phone for a long time. Still among the best there is Google commitment to 7 years OS and security updates is once again hard to argue with. Don't buy Google Pixel 9 Pro XL if you want fast charging. Battery life is greatly improved but despite a bump in speed, the Pixel 9 Pro XL's 37 watt wire charging is still well behind what rivals like OnePlus and Xiaomi offer. Don't buy it if you want the best RAM and memory. While Samsung forges ahead, Google seems reluctant to move to the latest, fastest, and most power-efficient RAM and storage in its phones, which stings when they cost about the same. Don't buy it if you want to play a lot of games. Google's mobile silicon isn't built for gaming and while the Tensor G4 handles intense games as well, you will get a much better experience with a recent iPhone or any flagship rival running the latest Snapdragon chipset.